Hello, everybody. Welcome to a solo edition of Simply Finance with Shane White. Uh, today is Wednesday, December 20. Oh, sorry, I'm screwing this all up. Wednesday, December 16th. And um, I thought it'd be fun to hop on today and talk about um, the new COVID vaccine. Uh, obviously, that's breaking news this week. The first um, vaccines got shipped out on Sunday, and people are starting to get inoculated, which is a, a new word that I'm learning. <laughs> and um, what I think would be interesting to talk about today uh, is how this is going to impact all of our investments and how this can, this development, I mean, honestly, how quick they went from approval to shipping these out has been kind of crazy. And I think most people knew uh, that this was going to happen to some degree. Oh, excuse me. I need a drink. Um, but what I think is interesting is this gives us an opportunity to kind of take a second, reflect on the types of investments we've been making. And now that there is a vaccine that is out in the public, what does this mean for future investments? And if you've listened to this podcast before, you obviously know I generally talk about investing for the longer term horizon versus the short term horizon. And really reason for that is just that um, that's the way I like to think about a lot of my investing, uh, my strategies, uh, the way I look at my portfolio. Uh, I've said on here a million different times, but if you're someone who day trades or um, you know likes to buy at the highs or sell at the highs and buy at the lows type strategies, um, bravo to you. It just takes a lot of time, a lot of energy that uh, honestly, I normally don't have uh, the ability to be paying attention to it all day, day in and day out uh, to make the right decisions. So I like to think about it more in a longer time horizon. Um, one interesting thing, stat that I wanted to mention to all you. So today, this is episode 90. Uh, and I went back and looked the first episode that I posted, um, basically walking through what was going on in the market. Um, and it was actually right after we saw uh, a, a horrible March and really when the COVID pandemic took off uh, was episode 10. So crazy to think that there's been 80 episodes of this podcast uh, between the very first episode and this episode, uh, you know, the first one being, you know, the impact that the COVID um, pandemic had on the initial reaction to the stock market. And then now fast forward all the way to the middle of December and uh, we have a vaccine. So, I mean, I think it's crazy 80 episodes and in the time frame, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a long year, but at the same time, pretty crazy to think that, um, you know, the pandemic was taking a hit on our country in March. And here we are in December and we already have a vaccine that's starting to roll out. Pretty incredible stuff. And uh, hats off to all the people who are involved with that. So anyway, wanted to mention that. Um, so yeah, we'll just we'll kind of walk through some of the things I was thinking. And again, like I say on here, you know, I'm not a wealth manager. I'm not a hedge fund manager. I'm no one that <clears throat> you necessarily should be taking investment inv advice from. Uh, I say that, <clears throat> with, uh, you know, all the confidence in the world that you guys listen to this and hopefully make your own investing decisions. Um, and really today, obviously, I'm not giving advice on stocks to invest in or places to put your money, but rather uh, wanted to kind of just talk through uh, the, the things that I'm thinking about when it comes to stocks and investments in general uh, that I am thinking about putting my money into given the new news of vaccine. And the reason we're having this episode is because the vaccine is a pivotal part of this entire COVID pandemic. And I think when we look back, um, these times right now are when things are going to pivot and change, um, you know, pretty drastically, hopefully in a positive direction, but we'll see. You never know. So uh, the things I want to talk about um, start off with, you know, now that we're in middle December, the vaccines are rolling out. Uh, obviously, you know, and this is something I learned uh, actually this weekend watching a, a show on ABC that came out Sunday night. It was called, I think it's called The Shot. 
and it's basically talking about um you know obviously the the vaccination that's that just came out and what i didn't realize is you know each of the states in our country has the ability to uh roll it out to um you know they are there each state is deciding who gets um the vaccinations and when and it's not a federally you know regulated thing which just means, you know, what does that mean for each state as far as going back to normal? I think that's something there, you know, that has yet to been fi- to be figured out. Um, there's a lot of unknown still as far as, you know, how long it'll take for even this first stage of frontline workers and then the elderly. And then, you know, they haven't talked about it a ton, but then how long realistically will it take for folks like you and I? you know, I'm 29, I'm a healthy individual, what, what, uh, how long is it realistically going to be before um, I'm able to get it? So those are still questions that we need to figure out. And we don't know the answer to but when it comes to investing, I think the question that's always uh, on the front of everyone's mind, especially since March is when will we go back to normal? And I think, uh, you know, I don't know the answer to that, obviously, but the way I'm thinking about it is it's still going to be a long time. I, I, would be shocked if we're back to any sense of, you know, complete normal um, in 2021. I think 2021 will be, you know, recorded as the year that vaccines slowly but surely got out to everybody. And I say slowly but surely not because, you know, they're not trying, they're, they're not like pumping vaccines out. There's just so many people that need to get vaccinated. So um, I'm assuming 2021 will be a year of that. So I'm not personally expecting major changes, but you know, even this vaccine coming out as fast as it did was a big surprise to me. So you never know. Uh, they, we could all get the vaccine a lot sooner than uh, you know they've been said they say or uh, that we think. So we don't know that yet. Um, really, the next thing is uh, thinking long term. You know, is there is the vaccine? Um, while a vaccine gets pushed out over the next, you know, really one to two years is what I've been reading. Um, what industry should we start to look into? Um, you know, when I say that, you know, right away, I think of what are the industries that have either taken a hit and maybe had a little bit of a bounce back, but there's still quite a few industries that are um, in the short term, I think going to take a beating and there's not a for sure um, clear avenue when they'll be back to normal. Obviously, I think the first one that comes to mind is like airlines and travel um, and restaurants. I think those, the things I was thinking about today are those ones are um, in a in an interesting predicament. And it's something for you guys all to think about as you think about your investments, um, you know, over the long term. For me, the way I like to think about it is, um, you know, even once there's a once most of us are vaccinated and things start to go back to normal what is the new normal going to look like you probably have heard that said a lot but when you think about it from like an airlines and restaurants perspective uh first off airlines that's an interesting one to think about because of course i think when when we all feel safe enough and some people already are today we will probably go back to like flying again to go to vacations and enjoying that part of life but if you think about normal travel and I don't have the percentages in front of me, but I'm just kind of speaking off the cuff. A vast majority of the people traveling are not for pleasure. They're actually for business today or, you know, not today, but before COVID. So what happens is, you know, as the airline industries, um, you know, turn a profit, the people who are really funding that bottom line are the people who are flying, you know, every month, every couple of weeks, you know, there's some people that fly every single week for work. Those are the people on those, you know, corporate budgets that are spending the big dollars in business class and just flying frequently. Um, you know, you and the kids going to Florida for a week uh, for spring break. That's those are those are not necessarily those are helpful in those times of year when travel is busy for per- pleasure. Definitely help the airlines, but that's not what you know funds their business month to month. So things to think about. And the reason I say airlines and why I just went down that little rabbit hole was, um, you know, will that forever be changed will we go back to meeting in person uh that's you know i think a lot to be determined still um you know especially like business meetings during this time i mean businesses have been moving fast things have been happening during covid 
And I think a lot of that's because of the unlock that, you know, Zoom has created. You know, you can get on, have an hour Zoom meeting or less, make a decision, move on. And you don't have to worry about flying across the country, getting a rental car, um, getting a hotel, get, you know, it, it's, there was so much time, money, and energy wasted for what may have been an hour meeting. You know, I'll never forget. Um, it wasn't a waste. I think there's a lot of benefit of meeting in person, but you know, I was a part of a meeting a couple of years ago where four high level people at my company, um, we all had to fly literally across the country. We stayed in a hotel. We got, I think one or maybe I guess one rental car. And then, you know, I think dinner was comp, you know, breakfast, lunch, um, and flights. And I just, you know, the meeting was literally an hour long. And so when you think about that at scale, um, it's great for the airlines. It's great for the restaurants. It's great for the hotels. I mean, that's how their businesses have continued to grow because business is growing. The economy has been great leading up to COVID and, um, you know, that's how the economy moves. People spend money and make money. Um, and after COVID, I think that's going to be one of the biggest areas that I'm going to, I'm interested to see what happens because I personally have a feeling that meetings and going out to visit people for work is greatly going to be changed forever. I, I just think that we're all getting so used to the zoom and how convenient it is and how we can fit business in our daily lives way easier than we ever could have. I think that's going to be a larger impact than we think. Um, and we'll see, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I do think, you know, I'm sure we'll go back to some sort of, you know, there will be travel from time to time, especially for major things, but I would be shocked if the budgets at a lot of these companies after this are as large as they were before. I think a lot of companies will realize they can save on overhead. They can save on travel expense. They can just save a lot of money by, by dialing down the amount of travel that they have. And if that is the case, if I'm right in that regard, um, those industries, I think, will never come back to where they were. Um, and what does that mean, you know, as far as investing in them? You know, I think that's where you want to, there's an opportunity, especially if I'm wrong, there's a great opportunity. Um, but if not, and they don't come back, uh, it could be a big risk investing in those companies. So something to think about. I think it's a great thing to ponder, talk to people about. Um, I This is where investing gets fun when you start to think long-term and like, what do you think? Um, and then, you know, when things go back to normal and people are f maybe flying more, I would think driving more, doing a lot of that stuff. What happens to like oil? You know, I was thinking about today, oil, um, you know, is back to basically where it was before COVID, but it's still not to where it was, um, you know, even back to 2018. So things like that, like how do these changes in our worlds impact things like oil prices and other commodities? Uh, what else did I write down here? Um, oh, okay. Another big one we had, you know, I talked about uh, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, uh, like a week or so ago on the podcast. And that's another one. Is e-commerce here to stay? And if it is, what businesses, what stocks can you get into now that are going to continue to benefit um, you know, over the next couple of years. For me, I think uh, e-commerce is 100% here to stay. You know, I've been in e-commerce for um, about five years now in some way, shape or form. It's continued to grow. This year has made it explode. People realize how easy and convenient it is um, to use e-commerce for growing businesses. Obviously, if you're someone who buys a lot of things uh, in general, you used to buy in store. And during COVID, you've bought more online it's pretty obvious how convenient that is. So things like e-commerce, you know, depending on the news in the media, hearing about the vaccine, the media could jump on that. And, you know, we've seen companies like Slack and Zoom take a beating over the last few weeks um, because I think some people believe we'll, we'll go back to an office and it'll be back to normal. So that's where you always got to be careful. Don't get too emotional with your investing. And remember, think long-term. Um, I personally think those companies are here to stay. I think they're, um, you know, I keep putting money into companies like Zoom, like Slack, like Amazon, like Google, um, just all of these companies that are invested heavily in e-commerce. My personal opinion is that they will continue to do so. There might be some bumps in the road. They might take some hits because of um, just new news and the potential of us going back to a new normal. But I think that the e-commerce landscape has a forever changed and the trajectory of where e-commerce is headed is going to be solely based off of this year now. 
So that's just my two cents. I would love to hear your opinions if you think differently. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention was just, you know, now that we've learned a lot of lessons from what happens with a pandemic uh, and, you know, pandemics can be different, obviously. And we don't know when the next one will be. Hopefully it's a long time from now, but are there companies that you could invest in now that you know um, profited and their stock benefited from um, this crazy time that you could buy up now or just, you know, keep it as a small little portion of your portfolio and hold on to it. You know, again, I'm, I'm 29. I'm thinking in 40 years from now, uh, when I'm almost 70 years old, will we see another pandemic between that and then and now? You know, we don't, we don't have no idea. Maybe, maybe not. But um, I think lessons learned here, there are companies that we could invest in now and hold on to. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of strategy in um, just buying and holding, you know, over time, the time value of money, um, compounding interest and compounding returns. If it's a company that pays dividends, um, all things that can benefit your portfolio greatly over the long haul. Um, and just things to think about. I hope today's episode was helpful. Obviously this is just me. It's a solo one. I kept it a little shorter. Just wanted to kind of put some plugs in your brain, you know, huge development as of Sunday, And as the vaccines roll out this week, um, you know, this is a monumental week in our history as a country, as a, as a world. And um, I always think it's fun to stop, reflect, and think about how this can impact your investments. So thank you for listening. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode and we'll be back with another one very soon. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.